for the paper. This side was Maria and Edna, but you will have more time at the end of class to finish up that side. Okay, so we're going to do this together first. Can somebody read this for me, please? Excellent. Okay, so who are my two people I'm looking at? Edna and Maria. What color should Edna be? Pink. Pink. Okay, I've got Edna. And how fast is Edna walking? Yeah, 1.5 miles an hour. <laughs> I thought you said 1.5, so. No. Okay, and then who's my other person? Maria, what color should Maria be? I'm going to do purple. Sorry. I was going to say purple, too. And how fast is Maria walking? 2.5 miles per hour. You guys have colored pencils. You can use whatever colors you want to use and just highlight that information. And then I'm going to draw a little picture because I like to draw little pictures. So where is Edna starting? Yeah, Edna's starting at the trailhead. So I'm gonna draw a little sign. And that's my little trailhead. And how far is she gonna walk? Yeah, she's walking 12 miles. Do, 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 do. And where is she headed? Toward a lake. So I'm going to draw a little blobby lake. No. I just like pictures. Okay, so, and where's Maria starting? She's starting at the lake. So Maria is up here, right? Okay, and is down there. Okay, and Maria is walking toward Edna, and Edna is walking toward Maria. That means Maria is walking away from the lake toward the trailhead, and Edna is walking toward the lake away from the trailhead, right? So we are going to set up a system of equations to model this situation. And then we can use that to solve our question, when and where are they gonna meet? Because they're gonna meet somewhere along the trail, but we don't know where and when yet. So there's two different variables we're looking at. We're looking at time and we're looking at distance. What unit am I using for time? Yeah, good, hours. And what unit am I using for distance? Good. Okay, and this is a little extra as well. You don't need to write this on if you don't want to, but right, I have my x variable, if I can write, and my y variable. We call our x variable the independent variable, and our y variable is the dependent variable. So we need to figure out which, is time gonna be x or is time gonna be y? Is distance gonna be x or distance gonna be y? We gotta figure out which is which. And the way that I always kind of think about it is like, time is independent of anything else. No matter what we try and do, time just keeps going, right? So the amount of distance that she walks depends on how long she's been walking, not the other way around. The amount of time she's been walking doesn't depend on how far she goes. You know what I mean? So that's how I know that time is going to be my independent variable. And distance is my dependent variable. The amount of distance that she walks, the amount of miles she walks, depends on how long she's been walking for. Okay? So I've got X and I've got Y. And again, X is the amount of time she's been walking in hours. And then distance from the trailhead is my Y, okay? 
So I'm going to write two different equations, one for Edna and one for Maria. So let's kind of break it down. I'm going to use my slope-intercept equation. And what are the two letters I have to replace with numbers? M and B. And what do we usually say M is? Slope. But today we're going to think about it as our rate. And what is B? Y-intercept. But they're not talking about slope or y-intercept in that word problem at all, right? So we're thinking about rate is my slope, and then my starting point is my y-intercept, my starting point. All right, so let's write our two equations. It's going to be y equals mx plus b. So we're going to replace m and b. So for Edna. What is her starting point? How far away is she from the trailhead when she starts? Yeah, so how far away from it is it? Zero. Good. So, okay, and what's her rate? Mm -hmm, one and a half miles per hour. So y equals 1.5x plus zero, or I could just write it like this, y equals 1.5x. Okay. Not 1 over 2, that's 0.5. It would be 3 over 2. You could do that if you wanted to. Okay, and then Maria starts where? That's her starting point. How far from the trailhead is she when she starts? Yes. And what's her rate? 2.5. Okay, so that's my equation for Maria. Y equals 2.5 X plus 12. So we are going to put that information into this table right here. And let's start with Edna. Starting with Edna. So our time again is our X variable. And then the distance is our y variable. So for Edna, what is her distance from the trailhead when she starts? Oh, zero. And then she's walking a mile and a half per hour. So after one hour, how far from the trailhead is she? A mile and a half. After two hours, how far will she be? Three miles. After another hour of walking, I'm sure she's walked for three hours, how far will she be? Four and a half. What are we doing each time? Adding 1.5, exactly. So how far will she be from the trailhead after four? And after five? 7.5, good. Okay, so we can think about that just kind of logically, right? But I can also use my equation to figure out all those values. If I plug in 0 for x, I end up with 1.5 times 0. That's 0. If I plug in 1 for x, I get 1.5 times 1. That's 1.5. If I plug in 2 for x, 1.5 times 2, that's 3. Right, and so on and so forth. I'm going to always get that same number. So I can use just logically like adding an out, a mile and a half for every hour she walks, but I can also use my equation to figure that out as well. So now let's look at Maria. Where does Maria start? Hmm? Yeah, 12 miles from the trailhead. And she is walking how fast? So where is she going to be after one mile? Fourteen point five. Hmm. Why do we have oh, two different numbers? Why did? Yeah. 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 We need to subtract on this one. Minus two point five. So she's going to be nine and a half miles from the trailhead after walking for an hour. She's getting closer and closer, right? How far will she be from the trailhead after two hours? And after three hours, and after four hours, 
And after five hours? Negative 0.5. Good. So if I use that, pardon? Yes. 4.5 what? What, what at 4.5 miles? That's where they meet. Exactly. You just said, I just heard 4.5. Okay, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay, so if I use my equation, it should be the exact same thing. If I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to end up with 2.5 times 0 plus 12. What's 2.5 times 0? 0. And what's 0 plus 12? 12. That works. What if I plug in 1? y equals 2.5 times 1 plus 12. What's 2.5 times 1? Hmm? What's 2.5 times 1? And what's 2.5 plus 12? So what's wrong with my equation? Should I be subtracting the 12 instead? No. So place this with a minus. What's 2 and a half minus 12? What? That's negative 9.5. Is that right? No, I want a positive 9.5. What do I need to change about this purple equation? Huh? Not the y. The x? Change the slope to what? Negative 2. It should be a negative 2.5. If I make that negative, then I'd end up with 9.5. Okay? So that should be negative 2.5. And we'll see that on the graph as well. So, right, we already pointed out, this is where they're going to meet. That's good. Um, do you notice anything else about the table? The table, not the graph. Does that mean, like, Maria went underground? Yeah, she just kept walking past the trailhead. Good. It'd be pretty weird. Okay. All right. Let's put it on a graph then. So um, we don't have any numbers on our graph, so we got to add our scale. So how far, what numbers do I have to go to on my x-axis? What? Five. X-axis. Mm-hmm. So five. One, two, three, four, five. Bless you. It doesn't need to be perfect, but try and make them semi-evenly spaced. And then what about my y-axis? Yes. So I'm going to go up to 12 on my y-axis. So halfway up should be 6. And halfway up there should be 3. And then 9. And then I'll go 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8. 10, 11. Okay. All right, let's graph Maria. Where is Maria starting? 12. After one hour, where is she? After two hours, where is she? After three hours? After four hours? Hmm? After four hours? Two. And after five hours? That, that negative 0. 0.5. There we go. We got my line. And then Edna starting at zero. And where will she be after one hour? 1.5. After two hours, where will she be? 
after three hours, 4.5. After four hours, 6. After five hours, 7.5. Okay, so I've got my second line. We've really already talked about this already, but I want you to answer that question underneath. What is the solution, and what does it mean about Maria and Edna? What's the solution, and what does it mean for Maria and Edna? Your solution should be an ordered pair, X and Y. And what does it mean for Maria and Edna? You should talk about distance, and you should talk about time. Okay. And then when you finish that, you can flip over to the other side and keep working on that. Um, I'm going to come around and check this part right now, or in a minute, and then I'll kind of get you started on the back and help you out a little bit. Okay? This one. All right, so this top one is just like number one on the problems from yesterday, right? What I would suggest you do is rewrite the equations over here on the side. And then you're plugging in X and Y. Negative four is your X, one is your Y. So if you plug in negative 4 for x and 1 for y, you're checking to see is this true or is this false. And then you do the same thing over here, and you check to see is it true or is it false. If they're both true, then yes, it is a solution. But if one or both is false, then it is not a solution. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, for numbers 2 through 5, 2 through 5, your answer is going to be 0, 1, or infinity. Those are the three options. So it's basically a multiple choice question. 0, 1, or infinity. Okay? So if you're not going to do anything for the rest of class, you could at least guess and have a 33% chance third, one out of three chance for each of those, because those are going to be your answers for two through five. Now, two, three, and five are all kind of the same deal. Four is a little bit different, and I'll talk about two, three, and five first. So again, we remember I have three different types of systems. Three different types of systems. My first system would be parallel lines. How many solutions do parallel lines have? Yeah. Zero solutions. And how do I know if two lines are parallel? How would I know from here? Because I don't have any graphs for two, three, and five. What did you say, Isabel? They have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Exactly. So that's my other option is I could have the exact same line. And how many solutions does that have? Infinite. Let me move it over here because I wrote it in that order. Let me write it in that order. So if I have the same line, there are infinite solutions. And that would mean that not only the slope is the same, but also the y-intercept. So same slope and same y-intercept. And then my third option. Yeah, one solution. What kind of lines have one solution? Yeah, they intersect. Right, if I have anything like this. And how would I know that two lines are going to intersect if I didn't see a graph, I only saw equations? Those don't have the same y-intercept, do they? No. 
They just have. Just the different slope. All you got to look for is the slope. If the slope is different, then the two lines are going to intersect somewhere. Different slopes. Okay? So in number two, that one's really easy because they've got slope intercept form. So you can pick out the slope, you can pick out the y intercept. Right? The slope is just the number in front of the x, the y intercept's the number by itself. But what happens in number three? Are those in slope intercept form? Yeah, this first one is in standard form. So can I tell you a little trick about standard form? AX plus BY equals C. If I wanted to solve for Y, what would I do first? Yeah, take away this X term. So then I have BY equals negative AX plus C. And then what do I do to solve for B? So then that means that my slope is negative A over B, and my y-intercept is C over B. This is my slope. This is my y-intercept. So let's look at this problem together. 3x minus 5y equals 20. 3x minus 5y equals 20. What is A in that equation? 3. What is B? We had negative 5. And what is C? So I just found out my slope of that line is negative a over b, negative a over b, negative 3 over negative 5, that's just a positive 3 fifths. So my slope is positive 3 fifths, and my y-intercept is at c over b, so 20 over negative 5. What's 20 divided by negative 5? Negative 4. So my slope is at three fifths, or my slope is three fifths, my y intercept is negative four. So that tells me my answer right there because I have a slope of three fifths, and then I can tell what my slope is in that second one. Right? So I can tell if they're the same slope or different slopes. Okay? So I did that for you in number three. You have to do it again in number five, but that's it. Okay? And then in part. In number four, they draw line K, and line J passes through 0, 0, and 5, 5. 0, 0, and 5, 5. So draw a line between those two points and figure out, is J and K going to have 0, 1, or infinite solutions? Okay, so again, 2 through 5, your answer is going to be 0, 1, or infinity. Okay, any questions? Yes, no, we okay? Okay, you've got 15 minutes to do that. 15 minutes, five problems.